Hi friends, good morning. Welcome back to my Chanel. If you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Megan. I am just your average thrifty bargain hunter turned full-time reseller. And recently I started documenting my journey here on YouTube. And I'm so glad to have you. Today we have a what sold video where I share with you 20 of my most recent sales across multiple different platforms. Today in particular, we are going to chat about Poshmark, eBay, Depop, and Macari. So if that sounds interesting, please do consider subscribing. And before we get into it, you wanna help my channel out in the YouTube algorithm by leaving a comment, but you don't know what to comment, you can go ahead and leave this emoji. Now let's get right into it. First, let me get my handy dandy notebook. Doesn't really make any noise, <laughs> but I did write down a bunch of stuff that I wanted to chat with you guys about. Aside from the sales, not a bunch of stuff, a few things that go alongside sales and selling. So I didn't want to forget them, so I wrote them down. Also, if you are new here, I will put a picture somewhere on the bottom of the screen of the platform that I'm chatting about so we don't have to remember the whole time I'm chatting about it. Also, I will put a picture of the item somewhere on the screen right here in case one, I forgot to put it in a haul or two, maybe you missed it. So now we're gonna jump right into the sales. First, we're gonna start with Depop. Let me get my handy dandy listings pulled up. Okay, so I had two sales on Depop to share with you. One is a very recent find. Find me now, Saddle May, tie front top, bubble print in brown, size small. It sold for 20 and because it sold on Depop, I only pay a payment fee, which for this particular sale was $1.32. So I make $18.68 on my $20 sale on Depop, which is wonderful. Next Depop sale, Agua Bendita. This is so exciting. Oquin Viola square neck tie shoulder dress in blue floral. This sold for $79.20 and the payment fee for this sale was $3.50. So my total earnings for this dress was $75.70. So that's super exciting, especially because this was my very first time finding this dress. Thank you to everybody that let me know that this was a major bolo and maxi dresses in this brand seem to have an extremely high resale value. So Agua Bendita, be on the lookout for that brand, Major Bolo. Okay, now we're gonna jump to Macari. And on Macari, I sold this Her Style Vintage Festival Crochet Midi Skirt in emerald green, size medium large. This sold for 49 and because it sold on Macari, I get the full $49. The but it does like tell me what the buyer also paid, so which is very interesting to me. The buyer paid $4.90 in a service fee, which it says service fees may vary. It helps us improve Macari features and your experience. They paid delivery, which is shipping for $6.99 and a payment processing fee of $2.27. For me, I would not shop on Macari if I had to pay all those extra fees, but on the flip side of that. For me as a seller, not having any fees is absolutely fantastic. So I'm really looking to ramp up my Macari store, especially because the people that I've come in contact with on Macari are all so nice. I, I don't think I've ever had an issue in Macari except for once I swip, swapped a shipping label and both people were so nice. It just, yeah. So I'm really going to be boosting up my Macari store. Let me see if I can tell you how many listings I currently have on Macari. 435. So that's nothing compared to the almost 1,800 that I have listed on Poshmark, eBay, and I think Depop has like 1,200. So I'm really going to work on boosting up Macari. And speaking of boosted, I know boosting is not on Macari, it's on Depop, but the things that I've been posting on Depop this week, I've been boosting every single one of them. I didn't typically do that. Like before, when I was cross-listing to Depop, I was just listing them, but I did notice that 
when you are posting on Depop, it does give you the option on the listing as you're creating it to boost it automatically, like right off rip. So that's what I've been doing. I haven't been like going in and selecting all the items and then boosting them that way. I've been boosting them as I list them. So we'll see if that has any effect on things selling. I mean, I had two Depop sales in the last week, which is two more than usual. I might have one and, and I had Oh, let me see if I can actually tell you. Also, I got a new keyboard at Goodwill, at the regular Goodwill, and I love it. It's like clicky, but I want the like creamy keyboard. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google ASMR creamy keyboard. Um, but mine is pink. Like, I don't know if you can really tell, the lights are pink. I can change it and make them do all kinds of things. When I type, they can like, it's really cool. This is a red dragon keyboard, but I got it. Quick story, side note. I got this keyboard at a regular retail Goodwill when I was shopping the Halloween stuff. When I was in the checkout line, which happened to be next to the hard goods, a little girl that was in line with her mom in front of me was started like typing on it. And I was like, so it like drew my attention and I, cause I heard her and I was like, oh my gosh. Cause I've been looking for a clicky keyboard for a while. Cause I've seen them on TikTok. I like, they just come across my for you page. And I was like, oh, that sounds so good. My keyboard on my laptop does not sound, it has like no sound, doesn't sound like that at all. I like that a lot. Maybe I would like listening more if I had a keyboard that sounded like that, but I wasn't gonna, I was not gonna spend the money on a clicky keyboard or you know a fancy build it yourself keyboard and then I'm not joking like a week later this happened where the little girl started typing on it and I was like and her mom was like don't you know stop touching it stop touching it so I was like oh they're not gonna get it and as soon as like the line moved up and I came up next to it I just put it in my cart and the little girl was like peeking out at me from her mom and she smiled and I smiled at her <laughs> like that and but I freaking I love it I love it love it love it anyway you can get all kinds of, like, you can change the little keycaps on the inside. I don't know what they're called. I don't think it's called a keycap. I don't know. You can change them, and they will sound different. So so I don't even need to get a different keyboard. I just need to get different little things that go under here. Anyway, let me see if I can tell you how many Depop offers I had this week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven nine ten ten offers this week and two people paid because i accepted every single offer which is usual i usually accept every offer that comes in on depop it's just rare that people actually pay so okay and now <clears throat> jesus let me get a drink okay and now we are going to hop skip and jump right into poshmark and sales on poshmark this last week have been like pulling teeth, like, but I am grateful for every single sale that I made and still have some fun, interesting ones to share with you. Okay, first sale, GHD Platinum One Inch Flat Iron in box. I found this at the bins. That's another thing I forgot to mention. Oh my goodness gracious. If I don't mention it, these things all came from the Goodwill outlet where my cost of goods is now $1.89 a pound, but previously, before this summer, it was $1.69 a pound. So most of these things, I paid $1.69 a pound for $1.89 a pound, somewhere in there. So that's my cost of goods, unless I mention otherwise. Anyway, GHD Platinum One Inch Flat Iron Inbox. This was at the bins and it was in perfect working condition i feel like it was an e-commerce pool and they just couldn't sell it and they were like whatever buy don't want to see it anymore it's sold for 70 dollars, and i will make 56. next poshmark sale peter millar essex quilted car vest in blue brown size double xl it's sold for 45 and i will make 36 and i believe this was in a recent haul this is fun Vintage 1970s bubble quilted mini bag, cottage core bag, maximalist. It sold for 24 and I will make 17 and I believe 24 was my full asking price. 
and I want to say this one to one of you guys, but I'm not positive because you didn't say anything. You just said something on YouTube that you were interested in it, but when the person purchased this, they didn't mention anything about YouTube. So if it was you, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, next sale, Fall Raven Pocket Mini Bag Crossbody Flat Bag Envelope Bag in Black. You get it, it's a bag. <laughs> New with tags, it sold for 24 and I will make 17. Next, I sold this Free People Easy Street oversized ribbed tunic sweater in acid lime size extra large. I believe this was in my last haul that wasn't my Halloween haul. And I mentioned that I saw it in the bin, knew exactly what it was because I sold this exact sweater last year for 50. This year I only got 40, but that's okay. So like I said, it sold for 40 and I will make 32, but it sold really fast. So perfectly happy with $40. I sold this J. Crew Vintage Ultra Soft Open Wear Cardigan Sweater in Black, 100% cashmere, size large. It sold for my full asking price of $45 and I will make 33. And the last Poshmark sale I have to share, Marine Layer Allison Pants Medium Pull... That's great. I don't know why I have medium pull on. Oh my goodness. It helps to read, Megan. Uh, Marine Layer Allison Pants Medium Pull On Ankle Crop Dolphin Hem in Black size large. I don't know why I have medium in the, the word medium in the middle of that title when they are indeed a size large. I mean, the title at the end says size large, the size I have marked as size large. And at the end of the description, I say size large, but I lit and I also photograph. That's okay. Something very important. If a garment has a size tag, it is very important that you photograph that size tag because that opens the door for people to be able to argue with you about size if you don't have photograph proof that this garment per the brand is this size. I don't think this is gonna be a problem because I have it listed as size large so many times, but it's just weird to me that I literally in the middle of this title wrote out medium. It must have just been in the other purse to see. Ay, ay, ay. So I found this exact style somewhere else online and just copied, you know, their title and probably I didn't edit it enough. Anyway, don't be like me. These sold though for full price for $39 and I will make 31. And then got to come down here to my little handy dandy notebook. I wanted to chat with you guys about a new scam on Poshmark. So I didn't take a screenshot in time of the first one that happened before either my flagging it got to Poshmark and they deleted it or something of that effect happened where the comment is now not on my listing anymore. But, oh, maybe I'll be able to just pull it up. And, hold on. In my news feed. Yeah, no, I can't see it anymore. Okay, but new scam. The, ha the people that are hacking real people's Poshmark accounts are now coming on your listing. And instead of just hitting you with the, the scam right off rip, oh, your photos are blurry. My iPad doesn't show this. Can you please contact, send them to, to me in, in the address in my bio, whatever the hell their little scam is. Now, first they'll just say hello. I got a message or I got a, a comment from someone on something I had just listed and it was pretty pricey. It wasn't like a cheap item. It was like, you know, over a hundred dollars and all they said was hi. And I looked at their profile. It was a lady and she had her, seemingly her face as her picture and then a few items for sale. And then she had sold, I think two things. And so I just wrote back, hello, because I was like, that's a weird, like, this is not AOL. This is not like, it's weird for you to just be like, hi. So I just wrote back hello on the item. And then as soon as I did that, I instantly got, but it was weird because it was totally different font. That's another part of the new thing. 
Part one, saying hi or hello, acting like a normal person before just jumping right into the scam. Uh, And then second part is the whole scam comment is now in like a different font. So I don't know if anybody used to change their font on Instagram or like even like back in MySpace days, you could change your font. Like I know that was like coding on MySpace, but like as simple as Googling IG or Instagram font changer, you can literally find fonts that will work on Instagram, but you can't like type in them. You just have to type all the words out and then convert them into this font. I hope I'm making sense. Anyway, they're saying hello to you to get you to engage with them, to think that they are a real person interested in your item. And then they slap you with the, oh, I can't see your photos. Can you just send them to me here? And they're not saying weird words anymore or weird characters because their entire comment is in a a completely different font that I'm assuming Poshmark's bots or whatever system they got going on with checks and balances can't or doesn't pick up. So that's fun. So if somebody just hits you with a hello or hi, probably a scam. So the next time that happened, it happened like an hour later, of course, because, you know, I'm sitting there listing things and scammers are abundant on Poshmark. I got a hello instead of a hi. It was hello. I look at their profile, same type of thing. A lady with her seemingly her face and then a few items listed and one or two things that had sold. She had conversations with people about these items that had sold, you know, but prior to them selling definitely was a real account that someone hacked. And I said, so a scam, right? That's all I said back to the person that said hello to me. So this is the second person that said hi or hello. And they deleted all of the items from their Poshmark. That's another thing. That's another thing. So I am like super save a hoe. And I go and comment on these people's every single listing. Do not contact this person. They are a scammer, a hacked account on Poshmark. Do not contact this person, blah, blah, blah. And I found that these scammers now are deleting all these items. All of the items that make their pro- their page look real or like a normal person, they're going ahead and deleting them because you can now see I've commented, if, I guess they're dumb and don't know you can have comments deleted on Poshmark, but Anyway, somebody hit you with a hello, expect a comment that's a scam coming up next. Probably not everyone. I'm sure there are people, just regular people on Poshmark that are like, hi, I'm interested in your item. I just want to chat with you about it first. But I don't know. Okay, that's all I have for that. (laughs) Now we're going to move on to eBay. First eBay sale. Free people, poppy cropped cashmere turtleneck in olive, size medium. This sold for 42 and I will make 32. Next, Calvin Klein jeans, vintage Y2K, spray paint, logo baby tank, micro ribbed in black, size medium. It sold for 25 and I will make 19. Then I sold a Cherokee vintage corduroy midi skirt, high rise, logo buttons, new old stock, size 10. It sold for 35 and I will make 30. Then I sold, this is cool, Nautica Challenge, J-Class vintage 90s, green yachting jackets, size small, new old stock. So this had the original tag from, I think the store was called Foley's. And the original MSRP was 135. I sold this jacket for a best offer of 136. So $1 over original retail, Uh, 136 and I will make 112. Next, I sold this Golf Wang Owl Camo Crop Polo Shirt Preppy Camp Shirt, size medium. You guys saw me wearing this shirt in a previous video. I think it was a haul. I will, it sold for 50 and I will make 40. Next, I sold this Zara Woman two button blazer, 100% leather, fully lined, size large. This sold for 75 and I will make 54. Then I know this was in a recent haul, Patagonia Houdini jacket in red, packable ultra lightweight outdoor jacket, size medium. It sold for 50 and I will make 42. 
Next, I saw this Brooks Brothers Merino Wool Knit Sweater Navy White Collar Size Medium. This sold for 22 and I will make 19 and something kind of crazy happened with this one. So I didn't know, this is another notebook thing that I wanted to mention to you guys. I did not know that on eBay you could leave a buyer feedback including a photo. So this is the first time this has ever happened. For this Brooks Brothers sweater, the buyer left me positive feedback that said, received a damaged packaging, but the item is great, thank you. Happy with the purchase. And then they, I'll just put it on the screen, and they put two photos. Look at these photos. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like in the one, you can literally see the sweaters like halfway out of the, the mailer and the post office has put tape on it that says, what does it say? Receive damaged condition, received in damaged condition. I am sorry, I did not drop that off at the post office like that. So I don't know like why they would put that tape on there. But anyway, this person was so nice and I feel like that right there would have been a easy recipe for a, re a quick refund for a scammer on eBay. Any reason for a, a, a return or a partial refund or anything on eBay, I feel like people are like, um, it's your fault and you need to give it back to me. But this person was so nice and I don't know, it just shocked me because they didn't even like reach out to me or message me or anything. I just checked my feedback one day and I was like, oh, what is this picture? And then I was like so surprised that it was a nice positive feedback, even though, I mean, I guess, see, and that's the thing. That's why I ship things. That's why I store them and ship them in these. I know that's like controversial to some people because it is plastic, but I feel like had I not put the, the sweater in one of these inside the mailer, the sweater would have been ruined, especially because it was wool, merino wool, and it was just fine. So anyway, okay, on to the next sale. Cameo Summer Crop Bow Top Resort Wear Strapless Blue White Size Small. This will for 76 and I will make 66. And in the last eBay sale, vintage handmade star pattern, bright fabric hanging quilt, 95 inches by 86 inches. It sold for 157 and I will make 108. Okay, so that's the last sale, but I do have a few more things to chat with you guys about. So this is like really exciting actually to me. So I was, let me see if I can just pull it up so I can read it to you as we chat about it. Hold on. Love this keyboard. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you like, let me, let me get closer so you can really hear it. If you like this keyboard sound or if this is like obnoxious and annoying to you or I don't know, to me, it makes me want to type, but I really, like I said, I really like the creamy one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, okay, where is it? Where did it go? Do not tell me they took it away. Your account. So I'm on ThreadUp right now, if I didn't say that already, and I'm looking for what I saw yesterday. Orders, sell, okay, clean out. There we go. Okay, so if you want to see what I'm talking about, I'm gonna put it on the screen so you don't need to go finding it on your own, but if you wanna see on your own page what I'm talking about, you have to go to your account, you have to be logged into your account, you have to go to your dashboard, and then, and that's under sell, your dashboard, and that's where you can look at all the items that are currently for sale in your clean out kits. Um, but at the very top, and the very right hand side under where it says like, hi Megan, and then it says your reward points number, it says direct listing. It says new direct listing, and I was like, what is that? So you're in your dashboard under sell, and then under where it says your name, if you're looking at your account, it should, at least it says on mine, it says new in orange letters, and then it says direct listing. 
So I clicked on that and it says, interested in listing items yourself on ThreadUp and keeping all the earnings? I was like, yes, <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. And then it says how it works. Create your listing, take a photo of your item, add the brand, size, quantity, and price, and any special details. Your item stays listed until it sells or until you unlist it. Easy peasy. Doesn't say anything about a fee for having it listed or anything like that. It just says your item stays listed until it sells or you unlist it. Second, ship the item to the customer. Once your item sells, use the prepaid shipping label sent via email. Easy peasy like Poshmark. No thinking about it, they just send you a label. Third, Earn credit to shop or cash out. There are no selling fees. So what you earn is yours to keep for all the items listed yourself. What? So it's like Mercari, but thread up. And, and you had to join the wait list. So it's, I joined the wait list, obviously. But there's, to me, when I first read that, I was super excited because Things that sell on that I send them sometimes are things that I've had in my inventory for multiple years that I basically have tried to like essentially throw away to the people that have liked it and no one's bought it for my lowest rock bottom price. And then I'm like, okay, I don't care. I'm going to send it to thread up over donating it and try to squeeze some money out of it because I know it's still a good brand or whatever the case may be. Sometimes they sell things for astronomical amounts of money, money that I could never get, like especially like brands like Escada. They sell that brand for a boatload of money. And sometimes I can't get rid of Escada. Athleta, they sell for a lot of money. So I just feel like the customer base is different on ThreadUp, for, especially from Poshmark or whatnot or eBay or Etsy or Macari or Depop. But when I was telling my husband about this yesterday and I was all excited about it, he was like, do you think, though, that people are going to trust these direct listings like they trust ThreadUp? I was like, oh, I don't know. And then it made me think, like, are they going, is ThreadUp going to allow you to, like, are they going to have requirements for your photos so that when you're looking at them, they, it looks like their website still, like a, a white out background, you know, how their listings are, everything on a mannequin with a white background, nothing in the back, or are they just going to allow any type of listing, any type of photos where, you know, it might be somebody's first time listing something and they're doing it on their carpet and the middle of their living room with their feet in the photo, which no, no shade to anybody at all, but like there are levels to listings. And I just feel like that, hmm, I don't know. If it is where I can list things and they can come up within amongst all the other thread up listings, like if we type in, Farm Rio dress, my Farm Rio dress and all of ThreadUp's Farm Rio dresses will come up intertwined. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I, I've never, I never saw that before. I think it was last night that I, it was last night because I was doing this and yeah. I've never seen that before. I didn't hear. I haven't heard anybody talk about it. I'm not aware of anybody being already like in the beta trial and listing things themselves on Poshmark. If you are aware of that, if you've seen a video about it, please, please, please put it in the comments below so I can go check it out. Because, like I said, I that, that's all I know. All I know is what I read to and, and what I put on the screen. But to me, that's very exciting and especially for someone like me who live selling is not for, these are going to be stagnant listings. So this is a whole nother platform. Like I said, a whole nother audience of people that may never look on eBay, Depop, Etsy, Macari, or any other Poshmark, any other reselling platform except ThreadUp. So 
yeah, I'm excited about that. Anyway, I've tried it on long enough. <laughs> but if you want to let me know in the comments below what you think about thread ups, I think they call it peer to peer on like their URL when you click on the direct listing, it's called peer to peer selling. So I think that's what maybe they're going to call it direct listing peer to peer. If you want to let me know in the comments below what you think about that, if you think it's kind of BS or if you think it's exciting, like I think it's exciting. Um, any, any platform where I get to keep all of my money, I'm definitely going to give it a try. Anyway, <laughs> that's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this What Sold video, you should go and check out this playlist that I made just for you. And as always, if you took the time to watch this video and you spent your social media currency with me today, I so appreciate you. And if you wouldn't mind just hitting like on the way out, that would be awesome. See you next time, friends. Bye.